Hey everybody, welcome to another video review. <clears throat> so, this was the last of the uh, three pieces that I uh, got um, about a week ago. Uh, this was the last to arrive, it arrived actually just today. And this one I got off of eBay. Uh, and I got it for a, a very you know fair price. Um, surprisingly so, because a lot of times on like eBay, because of the fees for eBay and PayPal, um, you do have to pay, you know, about 10% plus, you know, premium. Um, but I know I got a very, very good deal off of this. And of course, this is um, a sort of a, a pretty, you know, uh, sought after uh, piece. I'm searching for the right words. Uh, it's like an heirloom piece almost, you know, one of the big uh, heavy hitters. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you want to take a look at the Walt Disney Classics uh, collection as a whole, um, there's a certain tiers of ambition, tiers of price, um, tiers of rarity, and usually it goes the, the signature series. Those are sort of like the biggest, most expensive porcelain works of art, the ones that they use to celebrate their most popular animated movies. Again, the most ambition. Um, and so they're, they're kind of like the ultimate, the cream of the crop, okay? The creme de la creme, if you will, of the line. And then one step below that, uh, would be the uh, pieces that they would sell to commemorate the, commemorate the various uh, Disneyana conventions. And uh, these Disneyana conventions are the precursor of the current D23 conventions. Uh, back then, you know, they would sell these, you know, beautiful works of art, uh, hand-painted cells. Again, the stuff that they sold back then would just blow the stuff that they do today out of the water. Now it's just mainly pins and dolls and stuff like that which you know, doesn't hold a lick to fine, uh, fine art porcelain. Um, but that would be like the layer right below that. And um, you know, some of those, those pieces are always you know, very sought after. They're usually pretty limited in, uh, in addition size and they're quite ambitious uh, and they often depict characters or scenes that are quite special. So um, this of course is from Pinocchio. It's uh, titled Monstro's Revenge. And this was sold at the 2001 Disney Anna Convention, which was held in Disneyland uh, Hotel in Anaheim. And um, there's all, here's all of the paperwork. Uh, it actually comes with its own special certificate of um, uh, authenticity, which uh, will open up. And here you can easily read for yourself uh, the description. And here, of course, is the information, the title, the, the date of purchase. Um, the artist is Dusty Horner. Uh, it's porcelain, and as you can see, uh, mine is 178 out of a total size of 750, with 50 artist proofs for a total edition size of 800. So it's very nice that the, the classics collection you know, very clearly lays out the total numbers. And this is a little brochure uh, to join the classics collection um, society, and all of the different sculptures um, that are available uh, back then. And of course you have the um, official certificate of authenticity with the uh, limitation and the number. Monstro, uh, uh, Geppetto, and uh, Pinocchio. So let's uh, turn our attention to the piece itself. Uh, this is of course all fine art porcelain. The sale is uh, pewter and then Pinocchio and uh, Geppetto uh, themselves are actually made out of bronze if you can believe that. So. Um, it's actually quite, quite small. Um, it's gonna be hard to get that phone in, but hopefully you can appreciate some of the finer detail of the sailboat. So this little miniature, so to speak, really sells the scale of uh, Monstro himself. Let me try to do a little bit of work right there so you can see what they're doing. And I believe this is right where he's about to swallow them. Uh, I can't remember whether he's about to swallow them or whether he already got sneezed out and um, you know they're kind of being washed uh, to shore. Uh, the, the way the scene is kind of put together it looks like you know this is where um, they get swallowed but it's hard to say. But uh, the base of course is the ocean and here's the the waves rising up and Monstro leaping out of the waves uh, beautifully uh, sculpted it's really hard to do water, and so um, I think they did the best they could. I mean, 
Of course, I've seen better, but you know, trying to do try to sculpt water in porcelain, as well as to sculpt all of the frothing waves. I mean, that's just a little bit crazy. Um, and then to do it out of porcelain is just, and I have to, you know, again, mold it and fire it in a kiln in porcelain is just insane. But um, I think they did a, a reasonable job, you know, trying to kind of give you the illusion of water in this little tiny sailboat with uh, Geppetto and Pinocchio uh, really kind of, I guess, sells the scale and the size of Monstro. As you can see, the actual sculpture itself is not tremendously huge. It's still significant. It's pretty big. For a Walt Disney Classics collection piece, it's definitely worthy of a Disney Anna exclusive, definitely uh, large. Um, but, you know, compared to today's craziness with Prime One and whatnot and some of the customs, uh, this is not that big, but the small raft really sells the scale. And so you can see sort of Monstro leaping out. And this is quintessential Disney. Uh, beautiful, um, beautiful sculpt. Uh, the so-called illusion of life that Walt always wanted in his animation <clears throat> and, uh, <clears throat> and that the um, majority of the Walt Disney Classics, collect classics collection line also wanted to take that and um, be inspired by that, which is to give the illusion of life in 3D uh, format, uh, what Walt was trying to do in animation itself. And of course, you know, they, they almost always succeeded. So we can take a look at the detail of the eyes, the teeth, the, um, the open mouth. This is right out of the animated feature. Uh, just amazing <clears throat> to see. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm trying to clear my throat. All the way down to the tail. You can hear me uh, tapping it gently. You can hear that this is absolutely a porcelain. And then again, you can see sort of the waves on the side, the water on the sleek body. This is something you normally normally would never see unless you actually own the piece, um, kind of seeing it from all different uh, perspectives. I mean, they got detailed enough that you can actually see the blowhole right over here. That's the blowhole. So again, um, pretty amazing. And now when I got uh, Monster and he was a little bit dusty, uh, but it was you know, very simple to dust him off. It is in an outstanding condition. So again, um, the reason I love this is again, sort of the dynamic quality of it. I do love dyna dy dynamism, dynamism, dynamism in, in my scopes. And so this sort of frozen moment in time where Monster was leaping out of the waves, you get a sense of the majesty of this uh, killer whale the ocean's frothing as he leaps in the air. You have a little raft to give you scale. It's just a, a beautiful concept um, and really you know, genius. Uh, the actual scene from the movie you were thinking is just, how would you be able to replicate that in sculptural format? It seemed to be so ambitious as to be uh, almost ridiculous. But again, uh, you know, Dusty Horner, who's one of the uh, one of the guys who did one of you know who did a lot of a lot with Patrick Romandi Simmons. Uh, he, he's done a lot of great work for the classes collection and uh, you know he this is again one of his more famous pieces and so um, you know, he just really outdid himself with this you know giving you this uh, sense of movement uh, where you know monster is about to crash into this little raft and also very cleverly using the waves and the ocean itself as sort of a base to support a uh, monstro and give him the illusion of a flight the illusion of a leaping suspended in midair. Uh, and of course, it's just uh, incredibly accurate. Uh, nothing ever touches the classics collection in terms of fidelity to the animated characters from the movie. Uh, just so fierce. And again, everything just sort of ties together. So uh, I've been after this piece for a long time, for years and years, and um, was just never able to bring myself to pay the money that you know would be required to obtain them until now. Uh, he sold for, I think, close to 800 even at the Disney Anna Convention 12, 19 years ago. And so most of the time, you know, the pricing for this is going to be running well over a grand. And so I managed to get this for uh, 800 shipped, uh, which is, you know, a fantastic price. And uh, the seller, uh, the seller doesn't have a lot of Walt Disney Classics collection pieces. This was like the only one uh, that the seller actually had active uh, in terms of the listing. And again, um, was sent to me this time using professionally packaging from Federal Express. So you know, this week I got packages with Walt Disney Classics Collection through UPS, USPS, and Federal Express. And um, you know, surprisingly and amazingly, all three came through for me. There was no breakages from any of the three mail carriers, for which I'm profoundly grateful. 
So uh, again, uh, this was the last one to show up today. Um, Grandma uh, Fa showed up yesterday and then um, sharing the vision actually showed up on Tuesday. So it's been quite, um, you know, uh, sort of uh, exciting mail days where I was getting a green box, you know, almost every day. And, um, and three of some of the, you know, pretty high, highly sought after pieces and almost, I mean, this one's for sure is a grail. It is a grail piece. Um, and I finally got them after probably 10 years of wanting something like this. Um, at the time, you know, I mean, 2001, that's almost 20 years ago. I was like 26 years old. And so uh, buying a piece like this would have just been unthinkable back then. So it's kind of, again, really amazing that I actually now own one. Uh, where previously I had only ever been able to just see um, pictures of this. And so it is a sort of a pretty you know, awesome and amazing feeling to have it. Um, the three pieces from the Disneyland conventions I always really were interested in was Monster of Revenge, and then uh, Now You Shall Deal With Me is Maleficent Dragon, and then finally uh, Big Trouble, the, the one with you know Mickey S. Jack and the Beanstalk escaping from Woody the Giant. Uh, those were always the three sculptures that really captured my imagination and that I really was always like a dream to own. And uh, now I do own all three of them. I've made video reviews of all three of them. And I think I'll make a, a little short uh, video kind of having all three next to each other just to sort of, um, again, showcase how awesome that is. Now, they had Disney Anna exclusives for the better part of a decade, but some of them, of course, you know, I don't have as much of an emotional reaction to or don't think is that impressive. Um, but certainly like Mr. Toad's Wild Ride with him on his car, that's pretty awesome. Um, I would think about that, um, but you know, again, not quite the top tier. And then there's a Chernobog's Night on Bald Mountain, uh, which is a signature level piece in my opinion, uh, but the problem is at least in terms of the actual art itself, uh, I find him a little bit monochromatic. You know, he's basically black and little shades of black on a black mountain. Um, he has these huge wings, which also are um, very easily broken. And so a Chernobog, I probably wouldn't want to risk um, shipping, which means I would have to find an unbroken one uh, locally. And, and this is not, of course, the easiest thing to do in California. Um, and also for a price, of course, that I'm willing to pay. So uh, Chernobog, I'm sort of on the fence about whether I really want that or not. Number one, it would take way too much space. And then number two, I'm not particularly sold on the sculpture like I am for Monstro's Revenge, for instance. Um, but in reality, the three that I really set out to, to want, um, you know, from this tier that's right below the signature series is Monstro, Maleficent Dragon, and Big Trouble. And I'm just so uh, happy that I have all three of them. So I will definitely make a, a video showcasing all three. But for this one, at least, for Monstro's Revenge, uh, I think I've said everything that needs to be said. Uh, this is, again, a super rare piece. Um, I don't think you'll find many YouTube videos out there that actually show it to you from all these different angles. Um, so I'm hoping, you know, again, that you'll enjoy that um, and you can appreciate the artistry that went into it and you can actually see it from different angles and, you know, kind of see the, the throat, the teeth. It's like right out of that ride in Disneyland with the storybook canals. It almost feels like it's right out of that and so, sort of dwelling a little bit on the on the work on the foam you can take a look at the waves and of course you know, the, the cool body from all different um, perspectives all different angles all right uh, that's it for monstro's revenge of the walt disney classes collection i hope you enjoyed that until next time do take care